is involved. Lots of people. But we need to recognize a small crew that really pulled us off. And chairperson Jan Nicky, Edna McMillan, Carol Rohrbaum, and Fred Weber. So let's give them a good And I am real excited about this, okay? Daryl Dyer, let's give her a hand for the beautiful centerpieces. We made an arrangement here. Now, Daryl said, look, I want to donate these to anybody at the table that wants them. So Joan Shaw and I fought over this. <laughs> Not really. I wanted the kayaks. And a little fish that says, "I will make you a fishers of I will make you fishers of men," from Luke five ten. And Joan's going to take the flowers, so I will talk louder. Is that better? Okay. Anyway, everybody at the table, one of you is going to need to take this home with you. We and we promised Daryl that they would be gone because she made these special for you. So after we're finished here, you can arrange to uh, take the whole thing or. Do like we did and share it. Okay. When I was given the honor of emceeing this event, I looked for help. I had questions. And Chuck will tell you, I always have questions. <laughs> and I turned to God for help. Hey God, how should we handle this? How do we set up the right spirit of civility and decorum? And how do we put tonight's focus on Chuck and Cheryl? And God, as he does, answered me. Hey, Ron, watch the Oscars. <laughs> well, knowing God sometimes works in mysterious ways, Kay and I watched the Oscars. And no surprise, once again, God was right. It was pretty clear that our celebration has nothing to do with the Oscars. <laughs> In spirit, civility, decorum, uh, look at your kayaks, peace, self-control, <laughs> I mean, you can pick me okay. Instead, you will hear some really fine people share words of, like service, kindness, integrity, and family. In short, we'll talk about Christian values and God's love. You know, what Chuck and Cheryl stand for and what they brought to the village church and what they're bringing to Aberdeen. Now the word family will stand out. And as I think, thought of this, and as God helped me, uh, there are three families, but actually just one because we're all together in Christ. There's Chuck and Cheryl's family that can view this live streamed God willing that everything is working here. And Chuck's new congregation in Aberdeen and our village church family, uh, some who will share with us in just a minute. In a way, we're really one big Christian family watching a really good kid we love graduate and go to college. <laughs> Proud of how he's grown in our home and excited to see him move on to make an even bigger difference for Christ in our world. I have one last question, Chuck. Before we begin, it's rhetorical, so you don't have to answer it, and you don't have to say, hey, Ron, hold that thought, I'm gonna to get to it later. <laughs> so, so here's my question, and you think about this, because this is gonna be a first for you. <laughs> Don't you think it's pretty amazing for you to be here at a church, not in the pulpit, listening to good people say good things about you, and they're smiling, they're not sad, and we all know it's not the end, but just the beginning of an even more wonderful life. So this is a different experience. We've all been there when we've shared the celebration of a life. All of us have done that. But this is one where we can be even more joyous because you're moving on in a positive way. 
So, let's our celebration begin. A few church leaders have accepted the challenge of representing all of us and sharing what Chuck and Carol have meant to our church. It's not an easy task to share everything important that you have to say in a few minutes. So we thank each of them for doing this. Joan Shaw is going to be the first to share. Joan is representing our adult Sunday school classes at our church. Plus, I think you're covering the Take Two group to a covenant, so it represents both. And Christian adult education is one of Chuck's greatest contribution to our church. And I want us to be reminded that Joan chaired the amazing search team that called Chuck to our church. So I think we should give Chuck, uh, we should give uh, Joan a big hand for that too as she comes up. Here. Joan, watch the little thingy here. Well, good evening, all. It is my privilege to be here. Um, as Ron so nicely mentioned, I did chair the committee, but it is the committee that did the work. And I will tell you, I have no doubt that God set Chuck here and Cheryl here. Uh, it was really clear. Um, we were down to two candidates, and uh, I was in the shower one morning. We couldn't make a decision, and I was praying about it, and I got out, and I sent an email, and I said, everyone, read the job description. Pray about this today. By the end of the day, it was unanimous. Chuck was our choice. So that's just an aside. I hadn't planned to say that. Uh, but when Chuck came to the Village Presbyterian Church, the job description that had been developed was um, for spirit, Minister of Spiritual Growth, and it gave the individual the latitude to choose whether they would function as the children's minister primarily or the adult ministry, and we certainly know what Chuck chose. He was a welcome addition to adult ministry. Uh, we had been functioning in adult ministry with primarily outside um, guest teachers. And while they were highly qualified individuals, not always did they sync really with our church. And I'll give you one example. One uh, 9.30 service, at the sermon, the pastor quoted John 14.6. You all know what that is, I bet. And he said, Jesus said that. So we go into Sunday school following, and someone... The lesson was sort of led into this, and someone asked about that verse, and the teacher very sternly said, Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> so you see that we did have kind of a things at odds, but with Chuck, we've not had that. He's a member of staff, or he's been a member of our staff, and he has been in sync with the mission of the church and with all of the things that um, the church has wanted us to stand for in the community. Uh, of course, Sunday school grew, um, especially at the 9:30 service when we have upwards of, um, excuse me, <coughs> upwards of uh, 50 at, at each class. And I believe Chuck's email list for the attendees is probably around 115. So you know he's he's got quite a following. Um, but you know numbers aren't the only thing. Uh, I, I, I think they don't tell the whole story. Chuck and Cheryl both have made this class cohesive. They have made this group um, a small community within the larger church community. And their Christmas party between the services is legendary. You know, you see all the goodies are overwhelming and most of them have been made by Cheryl. Um, as Chuck's duties <coughs> me, have merged with pastoral care, he's become a lifelink um, to the church. He's done a repeat of the Sunday school lesson on uh, Thursdays, I believe, uh, at Covenant Living, where those who might be homebound can attend. And sometimes I've heard that he has some non-Presbyterian slip in there. <laughs> Chuck's biblical knowledge as well as historical facts of early Christendom have uh, really enriched his lessons. Um, 
He's always open to questions, as Ron has said, and sometimes he does say to Ron, hold that thought, as we all know. <laughs> but it's difficult, really, to ask a question that he cannot answer. Uh, I once asked him a question about the first uh, recorded, uh, 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 when the first Trinity was recorded in, in uh, Christian history. And he said, oh, I'll, I'll I'll look at that. And I then got an email of a half typewritten page, <laughs> which I could not ever recite to you, but it was very, uh, very thought out, very comprehensive, and told me probably more than I was asking for. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, in the 55 years that I have been a Presbyterian, I have not witnessed a couple in Christian ministry who are more um, an example of, of their Christian faith. Uh, they, um, they live graciously and modestly, and they truly are exemplars of the faith. Uh, as I look around, and I look around the room, I see some of you that are there every Sunday. I see some of you that Maybe come when you can. And some of you maybe that just drop by. Uh, but I'm sure you will all join me in thanking Chuck and Cheryl for their time with us. And we will miss you very much. And we will wish you well. And this is something to carry. I'm practicing without my cane. <laughs> This is something to take with you that will be our love and prayers going with you. Thank you, Joan. You covered all the hearts that we wanted covered. Very heartfelt. Thank you. Jason Boston. Okay. Another person there we want to bring up here. Jason is representing men meeting early. So, Jason, is that about golf and fishing? You're going to explain that to us? We know Jason for all he does for our church while still having been able to carry a kid on his back. I don't think I've ever saw Jason without having one of his kids on his back, um, even during the Pancake Festival. We also know Jason for being wise enough to marry Rebecca Boston. <laughs> Jason, come on up here and explain to those of us that aren't a part of men meeting early what that means to you and what that should mean to us. Well, being a men's group, we don't have a gift. That's the first thing. <laughs> um, I thought the best way to express our gratitude to Chuck was to um, just share what I learned and what it meant to me. The first time I met Chuck, I was at Melissa's Heider's house. She had invited us over for a then young couple's social. <laughs> Several months later, John Fraser says, we're starting this small group for men's Bible study at 0630 on a Thursday, and I was in. Networking, study, and prayer was the format. Prayed at the beginning and the end. Now me, I grew up semi-churched. I somewhat different from the group, and we were all different. But I was eager to reconcile the questions we all have to learn in our faith journey with the Bible especially from a guy with a PhD in systematic theology. <laughs> um, so it would be known as men meeting early. We had some significant traits. All adult generations were representative, even millennials when they were you know, not 20 years old. Um, everyone learned from each other. And again, the peace of Christ brought a different group of guys who wouldn't root for the same football teams, but for the same parties together in prayer and growth. Um, one of the early books was about servant leadership, Mark 10, 43, 44 in long form. 
Um, it's an impactful passage, right? Inspires numerous books and our role in the church is on deck. Uh, James and John had just been, hey, Jesus, who's going to be seated on which side of you? And he says, it's no wonder they were the sons of thunder. And he goes, among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be a servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be a slave of everyone else. And I think we all know Chuck well. He's not much of a morning person, but every <laughs> Thursday at 6.30, he had that pot of coffee hot for us, okay? It is just one of the ways he exemplified that. We always had the time to digest the material, to take it easy, to find where the line is. Um, and it was great. One of the things we studied also was uh, transformation, the idea that Christianity is just not a value system but a challenging journey that changes your emotional intelligence and brings peace to all your conflicts. And lastly, this is the, the less than lesson thing. Um, networking Chuck's, how's your new house? Um, it's great, except the 50 year old galvanized pipe doesn't create a lot of hot water. He's like, you wanna change it? And it was his last lesson, or one of his lessons that I forget is how to sweat fit coffee pipe. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jason. Um, it helps me understand uh, what, what this means, men meeting early in this context. Also, your comment about not being raised in a Christian home in a way that brought you to God, but it happened later reminds me that uh, I, I was like that. I was very much like that. Definitely as a teenager, as a young adult, uh, I thought the church down the block from where I lived on the west side took care of the mafia more than they took care of the rest of us. But I ran into someone. It wasn't Christ at first. It was a beautiful young lady named Kay. And I didn't so much want to go to church, but I wanted to be with her, and she wanted to go to church. <laughs> so I went to church, and I discovered a whole new animal, a church family, a group of people. It was a EUB, right, Kay? Evangelical United Brethren. And I was a pretty terrible Catholic, but I became closer to God as I he came closer to Kay. So Jason, you, you triggered that in me and I just wanted to share that with the group because it was so important. I'm sure that many of us have similar stories. And I'm sure I heard a hymn, probably for the first time more at the Trinity Evangelical United Brethren Church. And you have to thank Jay and Nikki for this because they were looking for a piano player. And I said, I'd bring my accordion. But Greg stepped in and saved you all. So Jan, in her wisdom, said, no, Ron. And Greg, in his skill, uh, is going to play Cheryl's, one of Cheryl's favorite hymns that I probably heard the first time at Trinity. Great is thy, faith, faith, great is thy faithfulness. And I think, Greg, you'd like us to stand, right? Please do. See the stars, I hear the 
Sandy Mock is representing caregiving. No, I'm, I'm skipping. Wait, hang on. She is doing that. Trust me. Our village church deacons are God's servants in so many ways. I mean, let's have a show of hands here. I won't ask you to get up. How many here have been deacons at our church? Raise your hand. Look around. Look how many angels there are. Okay. They are a blessing to our church and our entire community, especially how they have embraced being missional, something new to us, but something that we've kind of embraced, and I think we're doing it, reaching out beyond our church walls. Deacon moderator Elisa Morgan has been their organizer and leader in many ways she will come and share with us now. Elisa? Thank you so much. Thanks, Ra. Well, Chuck is an amazing believer, leader, spiritual, spiritual advisor, teacher, friend, handyman, and so much more. He is an incredible leader for the Deacon Board. His biblical knowledge and insight is phenomenal. He always gave the deacons an insightful background about the Bible passage that we were reflecting on. Chuck gave us insight also about the health and well-being of the seniors and members of our church family. He's in touch with their needs and made frequent phone calls and visits. A new ministry was created by Chuck last year to help our church and community schedule COVID-19 vaccination appointments. He gathered a team of 17 vaccination seekers who secured hundreds of vaccination appointments for people in our church and community. Chuck is always willing to lend a helping hand, and he is a great craftsman. He built the wooden stands for the Lent prayer walk. He also built the lighting frames for our evening outdoor community events. He does a lot of things behind the scenes. There is so much that Chuck does to help our church and community. We are truly blessed by his presence. He is a true man of God and will be dearly missed. We wish Chuck and Cheryl blessings on their new wonderful adventure in Washington. Thank you, Elisa. And, and you remind me of all the times that we've called Chuck for advice on lots of things beyond Christianity. I mean, look at the computer hard drive. What's going to happen here? <laughs> if you're missing an 11-year-old in your life, because they know everything about it, Chuck is right next to that person. <laughs> and how to handle things like, well, this didn't work. You had to have it fixed. I mean, we're talking about a, a servant spirit in so many ways. Uh, he definitely exemplifies it on multiple levels that we can't even begin to explain here. Uh, but God knew what he was doing when he sent a man like that and his wife to our congregation. Well, now I, I can say, Sandy, trust me, you're going to be next. <laughs> Sandy Mock is representing caregiving. What a powerful word, caregiving. Just think about that. And Chuck embodies caregiving. We'll let Sandy tell us more about that. We, we can't help when I, well, Sandy's coming up here. Sandy, I can't help but. I can't tell at all. I can't say that. No, no, I got 
to say this because you won't, and I'm going to say it. And come here, come here. Listen to this. We, we know Sandy, but we can't help but remember Bob Mock, Sandy's husband, who was one of the most selfless, caregiving angels our church has ever known. And Sandy, I just want to, on behalf of Bob, too, because I know he's here with us, to, to say, please share your feelings about Chuck. And I had to say that about Bob, because you. You, you know our feelings about him. Thank you. All right. But I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> as long as I have your permission. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> tonight you're hearing about many of Chuck's ministries within our church. And I would like to tell you about how he supported so many of the members of our congregation. Often toward the end of the week, the phone would ring. And it would be Chuck asking, how is your husband doing? Or how is your wife doing? And how are you doing? Or maybe the doorbell would ring. And this tall, caring person, Chuck, would be there asking, how are things going? And how can I help you? He was always ready to listen and especially to pray with you. Late one night, Chuck rescued Janet Anderson after an emergency room visit at Glenbrook Hospital. There were no ride sources available, so Chuck came to give her a ride home. Another time, Chuck drove to downtown Chicago to pray with Hal and Daryl Dyer in the hospital after they had told him, no, it's too far for you to come, we'll be all right. Chuck showed up. These scenarios have been played out over and over during the past 15 years. When difficulties arose, Chuck was there. When we came to Sunday school class on Sunday mornings, Chuck would ask for prayer requests, and many of us would mention spouses, friends, relatives, even ourselves who were in need of prayer. But after the requests were made, Chuck himself would tell the class about some of the other people he had spoken to and how their situations had changed. I also want to tell you how Chuck was there for me personally after our son Greg's death and during Bob's illness and passing. He was a tremendous help in putting together services for both of them, just as he has done for many others of you who have lost loved ones. Each service was personalized and full of hope for the coming joyful reunions we would have in the future with Jesus in heaven. Chuck, on behalf of so many of our friends here, I want to thank you for being the strong, caring, loving support we have needed. Our best wishes and love go with you and Cheryl as you both continue in God's service. And now we have special gifts, and Joan Solom, will you please come forward? Oh, you're over here. Come over. <laughs> Actually, Chuck and Cheryl, do you think you could come forward? <laughs> With the love of Jesus Christ, we offer you both these prayer shawls. Chuck, that one's for you. And Cheryl, this one's for you. Oh. And we hope when you wrap yourself in them early morning, late at night, or whatever, you will feel God's comfort and warmth. And we also hope that they will uh, bring a reminder of God's love and the love of everyone from our church. They will be reminders of all your village Northbrook, I can't say it, I want to say Presbyterian Church, but that's okay. um, all your friends, um, we thank you for your service over all the years and how much caring you've shared with many and have given us beautiful, wonderful memories, I'm sorry, and um, we, we want you to know that you will always be in our prayers and our thoughts and Godspeed. Thank you.
And I thank you, Sandy and Jonah. And you can lead us now in Chuck's, Greg, would you lead us now in Chuck's favorite hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Yes, please stand again. <laughs> church leaders this evening. Carol Rohrbau has been that all the years we've known her. Today Carol is representing Women Evolving and will focus on the blessing Cheryl has been to our church. I have to add this. Um, I have never been part of a church where women and men have been co-equal partners in lay leadership. Thank you Carol in all the leaders God has given us, the men and women who serve the Lord by serving our congregation. And I think you embody that, Carol. Please come up and, and share. Where are you, Carol? Okay. Where are you, Carol? Well, when I first received the call that Chuck was leaving the church for a new call, I felt like I'm sure most of you did. At first, I was sad to think that he was leaving our church because he's been such a vital part of our, fa of our staff. I'm starting to say faculty. Um, and I also felt joy because I know that he is pleased to have this call. Well, it wasn't long after that that I was thinking, uh-oh, that means Cheryl's going to be leaving too. <laughs> And she has been such an important part of our widows evolving group, so we are going to miss her in that role. Being a widow here at the Village Church with many others, we want to give our heartfelt praise to Cheryl and to Chuck for in, in, initiating the plans for this much needed support group. And I was so pleased to be part of the initial planning team with Joan Solom, and Sandy Sinyard, and Cheryl, and Chuck, now we did give him a pass on that. Normally now we just use him as a visor for technology. <laughs> it's such a blessing to both the women of our church and the women of our community who have been able to value this time and the support that they get from this group. We are filled with gratitude for Cheryl's inspired leadership as we progressed from ideas to actions that have resulted in this welcoming and friendly support group. Her guidance in planning and planning, and we're still doing it, throughout this process has been a big part in the success of our group. Our group is growing in membership and we are scheduling more events, usually at least three a month. 
And I assured Don that we do fun things too. We even have a happy hour. <laughs> but communication is very vital in our, in our group and much of our communication is by email. Cheryl has done all of this for us, all of the emails that need to go out to, to tell our members about events that are coming, about reminders, and so on. But more importantly, she also keeps that list accurate and current for our 80 members. It changes every week with the new members or with new information, and so Cheryl, we thank you for all the time you spent on that. In addition to sending the emails, we make contract, contact with our members throughout the year in the form of greeting cards at special times for religious holidays or for their own special personal day. And these cards are so special because they are designed by Cheryl so that the verse included is specific to our women. Again, thank you, Cheryl. In addition to these contributions, the one area that overshadows all that she does is the spiritual message that she gives at each of our monthly meetings. In this inspirational time, whether it be devotions, prayers, or stories that relate to our women, the Christian ideas that Cheryl presents encourage us again and again. A strand that can be found in each message throughout her devotions is that God is always with us, even though we are feeling so alone. And he provides the strength we need through these difficult days after we have lost a spouse. Especially during our Zoom sessions during the COVID time, her comments were always so personal and relevant to our women. Yes, Cheryl has been a great friend of this group, and we will miss her calm but supporting demeanor. Now we're aware that this won't happen, but we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could call her on the fourth Monday of every month at about 2.15, and she could do our devotions for us. Well, we know that's not going to happen, but it was a fun thought. Cheryl also distributed a handout to our members several times throughout the year uh, that referenced various scripture verses that our women could use as a reference. And I'd like to close by reading one of the verses. The list that she t gave to us always said, asking God for help. And the first one on this particular page says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cheryl, we care for you. We will miss you. Thank you. You know, our church is so lucky to have a team of three ministers like that. And another man for all seasons is Pastor Greg. Pastor Greg is, Pastor Greg is going to represent our staff. And he's gifted in so many ways besides his wonderful voice. We see him running around hither and yon doing lots of things, for the, certainly for the contemporary service and for all of us, helping us in lots of ways. Um, there's one little story I want to share with you. God is using Greg well, and we'll, we're grateful for that. A few years ago, our church put together a celebration of Christmas with a potluck dinner. I think Kay was an elder then, and I think we had kind of an event like this one here. Lots of people at the church celebrating with songs and a time for sharing. And guess what? Guess who was MC? Guess who got to ask questions? <laughs> well, I asked this question of Greg, and I'll never forget it. And here was the question. I thought about it, because I was going to ask everybody that was significant at this event, a question that was a little more piercing, not just a pablum one. So I said, Greg, does your music inspire your faith? Or does, your, or does your faith inspire your mu mu music? And he didn't beat an eyelash. He says, Ron, and to the group, he shared a heartfelt response that shouldn't surprise us. My faith 
inspires my music. Pastor Greg, please come up and share, and then you can pass the microphone on to your boss. Yes, I will. Right. Well, um, Chuck, so many things have happened over these past 15 years you've been here. Think of all the staff that we have worked with through all these years. <laughs> if I were to go through all the staff turnover in that time, we'd be here another hour at least. But just thinking about the senior pastor alone, three senior pastors, two interim pastors, not to mention I think I served as head of staff maybe four times during that time. Um, but throughout that time, in addition to everything everyone else has mentioned tonight, you played a significant role in keeping things together. Not only did you provide deep spiritual leadership, you provided much needed continuity in a time of transition, numerous times of transition. It's been a privilege serving on staff with you throughout these years, and I will cherish many memories together. Uh, during these years, we've experienced many wonderful and fun times together, and no, I'm not talking about the staff meetings. <laughs> I only realized that Chuck wasn't a morning person about three or four years ago, and then it all made sense how Chuck is at 10 o'clock in the morning at staff. But um, I think of all the mission trips we've been on, traveling with the youth, going to all over the place, from Manitoba to Seattle to Michigan to Chattanooga. Great times together, and I'll cherish those memories. We've led worship together, not just on Sunday mornings from time to time, but especially reading scripture at all those Christmas Eve services year in and year out, as well as washing the feet of our congregants on Monday, Thursday many times. And we were there together during the difficult years when Mike was sick. And I appreciate the support and the friendship we had during that time. I guess what I'm saying is we have a lot of history here. And I'm grateful for this wonderful faith community. You've been a good friend and a good colleague <coughs> through all the ups and downs, and I thank you. You all knew I'd get choked up. I always get choked up. <laughs> well, I was asked to sing a song tonight, and originally I was going to sing some sort of blessing, but then I changed my mind. Decided to sing a song uh, that, Colin, uh, that I sang at Colin Eversman's ordination service. Turns out he left before you came. I thought he was the first youth pastor when you were here. The song is a song of a disciple who worships God with deep reverence and awe and seeks to live out a faithful and obedient life wherever God leads. And that's you. God has called you to serve on this continent in so many places from Canada to Florida to Chicago and now let's go out west. God has called you to serve in many different ways and you have served at this church in many different ways, whatever was needed, as we've already heard about. Because in the end, you truly have a servant's heart and you are willing to listen to the Lord and follow him wherever he leads. The song is entitled, I Simply Live For You. In the end, you simply live for him and him alone. Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory. Oh, 
instructions, I'd like to invite Spencer forward. <laughs> well, thank you, Ron, for being the master of ceremonies here. The, the, the little stories and everything really added a nice touch to, to it all. I, too, want to extend my thanks to the group who um, uh, put all this together. Uh, certainly, the committee, uh, Daryl Dyer, Edna McMillan, Jan Nicky, Carol Robert, and Fred Weber. Weber. Uh, this takes a huge effort to pull something like this off, and we owe them a huge round of applause. Thank you. things we need to do um, and we want to uh, shift the attention now to a video that we've got going uh, all ready to to go I think almost, Fairly, yeah. almost ready to go and uh, that video will be coming up shortly and so <laughs> to get the sound going then we have the sound going now We're good. We're good. there we go <laughs> lesson and sermon prep, watched you visit parishioners late into the night, and I've spent I don't even know how many Saturday nights helping you prepare your classroom. Mom, I've watched you teach Sunday school and organize service ministries and throw some pretty amazing Christmas parties. Your service and your dedication to this church that I love have enriched it beyond measure. Thank you both. Love you guys. Hi, Mom and Dad. I hope you're hanging in there as you get ready for your big move. 
I love you both so much, and I'm excited to have you out here just a few hours away from me. Um, to the Village Church family, thank you so much for all you've meant to my parents and also me and CJ over the years. Um, you've been, truly been a blessing to our family, and you will always have a special place in my heart. As we come to a little bit of a close, uh, I was told we were going to 10 o'clock, so I got a little time to kill here. Uh, we'll keep it going for a little Take while. Take it out of your sermon. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, I, I do have just a few thoughts uh, in the midst of all of this. Um, and it revolves around this uh, theme of courage. Um, it takes a lot of courage to embrace a new call in life. It really does. Uh, because you have to let yourself be in a position to be open for the Holy Spirit to speak. And Chuck, one thing I have respected about you in just the four years that I've known you is that you have always tried to put yourself in a position to listen to the Holy Spirit and be open to where the Spirit moves. And uh, that is a position of vulnerability. And Cheryl, you too. Uh, I am uh, very much aware that this involves two people, too, uh, not just one. Uh, because, let's face it, as ministers, we've got a mixed bag of motivations and all sorts of issues stuff going on inside of us at times. And so to open ourselves, open yourself up, certainly to being open to where the Spirit's leading you all takes a lot of courage. Um, and so I, I just want to point that out particularly. It also takes um, another aspect of that courage is you're leaving something that's very familiar to something that's not familiar. And you're, you all both are willing to go to someplace new. Uh, and that takes some guts to do that. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, that's not easy. Um, you're familiar with the community here. You know all the faces here. You know the people here. You know the insides and outs of the village church. You know our quirkiness. You know when you love us and all that. And you're, you're very much familiar with that. And here you're going to an unknown place that is very much, you don't know all that, but you know it's coming uh, on those things. And that church collectively has said, we want you to lead us to the next place. And you, in faith, both of you all, have said, here am I, send us. <laughs> and that takes a lot of courage. Um, one of the things that um, I think it's good to be reminded for all of us, um, we think that calls are just limited to pastors. But that's certainly a, a, a being a disciple of Jesus, that Jesus calls all of us to different places at times. And Chuck, you and Cheryl are certainly in good company, biblically speaking, um, with folks like Abraham and Jacob and Moses, Samuel, Jesus certainly reaching out uh, and calling the disciples, and um, uh, Saul, who became Paul. And uh, you said yes to where God said go. And I hate to sound like a bad dad joke, but it's hard to say no to God. You know, I mean, it's just, you just can't. You have to go. Um, so as you go, uh, this church and others too who uh, couldn't make it here as well, uh, wanted to make this new call to try to take away perhaps some barriers. Um, we all know that moves, there's all sorts of unexpected expenses and things that happen and all that. And so a lot of folks contributed to provide something for you all uh, to try to at least ease some of that burden a little bit. And so why don't you all come up here um, together. And uh, I, I know who to give this to. <laughs> to Cheryl. <laughs> 
But um, we hope, on behalf of the church, that that helps kind of, kind of just ease some of your kind of wondering how you're going to pull off some of these things. Uh, and and also, um, I think those cards they're filled with prayers and words of encouragement too. And know too that this church is committed to praying for you all because we feel like we are part of forming you all to embrace this call too. Uh, that we are part of this. You know, the Church of Jesus Christ is certainly way larger than the Village Church. Uh, and we have appreciated your season with us for these last 15 years. And we know that the Church of Aberdeen can't wait to have you. And so it's kind of this letting go and trying to hold on kind of feel. But now is the time to begin to loosen our grip and trust in the Spirit taking you there. Uh, and so with that in mind, uh, what I'd like to do is just close in a word of prayer. Uh, and please join with me as we pray for Chuck and for Cheryl now. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks tonight as we celebrate the ministry of Chuck and Cheryl Guth, faithful disciples of yours who sought and to witness and to proclaim your good news to us. We give thanks for their ministry here among us for these last 15 years, for all the teaching, for all the phone calls, for their presence at our bedsides, for being with us when we lost loved ones, for welcoming those who were new uh, children of ours and grandchildren as well. We would ask, oh God, that you would be with them as they go to this new call on their lives, this church in Aberdeen, Washington. Oh God, we'd ask that you would keep them uh, safe and secure, but with that adventuresome spirit that comes through your Holy Spirit. Lord, along this way and along this journey here that's going to take a little while to get out there, we'd ask that you would surprise them with moments of grace on the road to confirm once and again that this is where you would have them to serve for this season of their life. Oh God, it is hard to let go, but we trust them to you. Oh God, we thank you for them and for all that they have meant to us. And we send them now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank. All. I'd like to thank all of you for being here. What a what an a, amazing backdrop of my time. Fifteen years. You all are so so special. Um, I told I've told a few people that a number of months ago I started praying for the people at. Aberdeen Presbyterian Church and um, so I was praying for two congregations and that will continue. I will be continuing to pray for all of you. I love this church and it's been such a joy to be a part of these, these past 15 years. There's so many things I would have liked to have, you know, said along the way with various comments to talk about men meeting early and interact with Jason and his kind remarks and the, you know, every, every speaker had things and I just, oh yes, that was so fun and it was special times. What Greg didn't say is Greg and I have an affinity for Mediterranean food and one of the things that part of our friendship was um, going to PETA Inn. And so we shared a lunch at PETA Inn about two weeks ago. I started picking his brain. I am now starting to be a worship planner. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so Greg helped me. He's given me resources, and that's been fun. Um, this afternoon, I was interacting with our office manager out there um, working on the Monday Thursday service um, just so you know it was 54 um, degrees she was out in a park with her daughter and her daughter's friends 
um, blue sky, sunny, and I was looking out the window as I talked with her. And these enormous, beautiful, yes, they were beautiful, um, snowflakes dropping down. Um, but it made me sort of think that Aberdeen could be nice. <laughs> you all are amazing. It's been such a joy, such a joy to be a part of this church. Thank you so much. I think with uh, Jan, is there, I'm looking at Jan because she's my coach here. What? Everything's good? We're good. All right. We have done it all, folks, tonight. Linger for a little bit. How can we help clean up? Bring your stuff over there. All right. And that's your final task. And make sure there's still coffee and desserts and all. So linger a little bit if you'd like. <laughs>